Hello friends, my name is Abhay Tripathi. Today we are going to talk of ECGI and ECI related topic. So ECGI stands for E Utra Cell Global ID. <coughs> what you see on the screen is 29.274 release 13 version. Obviously this is backward compatible with release 8 onwards. So uh, in this section 8.21.5 we have ECGI fields which are defined. <coughs> what you see on your screen is that there are each bytes are defined. So ECGI is a combination of MCC, MNC and ECI. ECI stands for EU Trussell ID. <coughs> there are three octets from 4 to 6 which are being used for the ECI and then one byte from the third octet. So essentially there are seven bytes and each byte has four bits. So there are 28 bits which are used in the ECI. <coughs> Now let's look at where is the uh, where is this ECGI or ECI value gets uh, used or where you can see them in your network. <coughs> ECGI is something which is broadcast on the uh, on the air interface and the same is then communicated by uh, node B to MME and then to P gateway and S gateway onwards by um, by MME. <coughs> what you've got in the screen is uh, is a decode from Actix. It's essentially a SIB1 decode. Uh, this is a log file from Claro network. It's a band 2 network. Uh, and uh, what is important is they have mentioned a cell ID here. So for time being, let's just focus on uh, on the cell ID, which is 8713405. Now, if if for a person in field, if somebody sees the cell ID, how do you decode it? That you know, um, you know what are what is it going to be used for? <coughs> So the answer to that question lies in that there is a specific format for um, uh, for ECI. Like as we said, ECGI is a combination of MCC, MNC, and ECI. Let's look at the ECI value. What is uh, what are its constituents, and then further on we can help in uh, decoding of this SIP1 message. Okay. So what I have got here is is ideas nomenclature guideline uh, so there are two topics that are there in this uh, enode b and eci so this is a structure of ecgi as we are seeing in the standards document mcc mnc then 28 bits which is for enode b and cell id the portion which is mentioned as eci has two components one is enode b id which are top 20 bits and then cell id which is bottom 8 bits so anything which is re so these 28 bytes are the ones which represents e node b and cell id now in the log file that we are seeing here this number let's try to decode it so what i've got here is i've already taken that dump from here so 8713405 is added here then what we did was we converted this number into so let me convert that number 8713405 convert into hex that becomes 5318f67 and then i have segregated them out for each byte now remember we said last 8 bits are cell id so in this case in hex 67 is In hack 67 is 103 in decimal. So if we decode this portion, sorry, if we decode this portion, we get the cell ID. Then the remaining bytes represent the enode B cell ID, enode B ID. So the remaining bytes in hex are 5318 F. So that has an E node B ID of 340367. Now let's go back to the decode. So what Actix has done was also decoded it. E node B ID 340367 and cell ID 103, which matches with the way we just debugged it. Now let's look at from from prospective closer to home. So what are we going to do it in idea? Okay, so the structure still remain 28 bits. <coughs> the, 
the bottom 8 bit represents the cell ID and then remaining 20 bit should represent the E node B ID. Now what we have found through trial is that you know while E node B can transmit 28 bits but somewhere in core network sometimes in the IN all INs are not ready to to accept not yet ready to accept the 28 bit uh, ECI. So, uh, but almost all of them are able, or in fact, all of them are able to do minimum 24 bits. So, what we have got is, in order to eliminate any possibility of any data loss, the approach we have taken for nomenclature is, first 4 bit will keep them as 0, just in case even if they, it get chopped, you know, there is no information that we'll lose. So, then the last 7, last 8 bits we are going to use for cell ID and then remaining 16 bits we are going to use for the for the E node B ID. So this way, you know 2 to the power 24 from 8 here and then 16 E node B. So 2 to the power 24 we can have maximum value which can range to this. However, there is again a logic which needs to be followed. So what we have done is <coughs> in our guideline which is nomenclature guideline version 1.2 what we have said is that e node b id should begin with 4 and the site id component physical site id component should be same as what we currently use in 2g 3g so essentially a 4g site on a site id 4 uh, site id of 9999 will be 49999 okay so this is the e node b id and then what we are also saying is that on the cell ID side, we'll use 4 and start with 1. So 41, 42, 42 till 49. So this will be the cell IDs of all the uh, of uh, 4G cells from for that specific ID. So first sector would have a cell ID of 41, second 42, 43, 44, so on. And then finally 40. If there is a site which requires more than those many number which is highly unlikely you know we'll use the numbers from 31 till 39 and 30 and similarly 21 to 29 and 20. What would most likely happen is that in a circle there may be more than 9999 sites. So in those cases what we have said is if that being the case then after 4 we'll use the digit 3 so again we'll get 10k and then use the value 2 so we'll get another 10k. So that way at least 30,000 physical sites we are covered for that circle. Hopefully for a you know for a 4G circle there should not be those many sites in any circle. Okay now let's go back to the structure. So what we have said uh, what I've got here is an example where I'm taking the value of 43 and then we are keeping the cell ID, uh, the E node B IDs as 49,999. So let's go through that. If I take 43 as cell ID, then my binary becomes 1011010, which is 2B in hex. So I've got this cell ID for 43. Then we have to look for the E node B ID, which is 49,999. So the hex of that is C34F. So we got C34F. Remember I said the top byte we have to keep 0. So if if we concatenate all, uh, concatenate all these things, we become C34F2B. So let's try to decode that and see what is the number that we get. So 0C34F2B. Oops, sorry. 0C3 4F2B. So that gives me a decimal number of 12799787, which is what we have got here. And as I said, 24 bits is what we are using. So maximum number I have taken here. So if you look at it carefully, this number is lesser than this number. So it's a valid legal number. So if in IDEA network, we use a cell ID of 43 for a site ID of 44,999, for, sorry, 49,999 on a site ID of 9,999. What you should see a value of 12799 here. So in SIV 1, you know, we would have the cell ID changed to 
this number. Obviously, it varies based on you know what is the cell ID and the site ID that we are using. This finishes the discussion today for ECGI and ECI. Thank you.